Hello, my name is Takumi Murayama. I'm currently a postdoc at Princeton University, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about my research. So let me start with a brief overview of my research. So my research is in algebraic geometry and commutative algebra. And there are many facets to my research, but one current focus I have is to build the foundations necessary for algebraic geometry and commutative algebra in arbitrary characteristics. And so what are the foundations we need? And so for me to describe these foundations, I think it's first important for me to describe some important tools that we use over the complex numbers. So over the complex numbers, there are two very important tools that we use. The first one is resolutions of singularities. This was proved by Hironaka in 1964. The other one is vanishing theorems. There are many vanishing theorems, but the one I have in mind is due to Kodaira in 1953 and was further generalized by Kawamata Fiveg in 1982 and Kawamata Matsuda Matsuki in 1987, among other people. Um, the issue with these two uh, very important ingredients is that they're actually false or unknown in positive index characteristics. So what do I mean by this? So first of all, resolution and singularities are known only in dimension up to three. This is due to Lippmann, uh, Lippmann and Cossart and Piltant. And vanishing theorems are false. This is due to Raynaud and Totaro. And so to work in arbitrary characteristic, you really need to find replacements for these two tools. The other thing I want to mention is that um, if you work with more general things of, uh, over fields of characteristic zero, for example, if you're working over a formal power series ring or rings of finite type over formal power series rings, then we didn't know that resolution singularities or vanishing theorems hold, held until fairly recently. So resolution singularities were proved by Temkin in 2008, and I was able to prove that these vanishing theorems hold. And so what I want to talk about next is what are these vanishing theorems I was able to prove and also, what are some applications of these? And what can we do instead in positive index characteristics? All right. So what are my vanishing theorems for schemes in equal characteristic zero? So here's the statement of my vanishing theorem. It's a special case. Um, but what it says is that if you have a Noetherian local domain containing the rational numbers Q, and you have a proper morphism from a regular integral scheme onto the spectrum of R, um, then you have certain vanishings of local cohomology modules. Um, so maybe what's not too important to know exactly what this says uh, for, the, for this elevator pitch, uh, but I want to point out this was previously known only for morphisms of varieties or some analytic cases as well. Um, and this statement with schemes was only known in low dimensions. So that was known when R is of dimension at most one and X was, or when X is of dimension at most three. Um, and again, this is false and positive index characteristic. Um, and, th and in that sense, it's optimal. You can't replace this containing Q condition with something more general. And so how are vanishing theorems uh, used in applications? So uh, let me describe some applications of my uh, vanishing theorem. So uh, as I said before, uh, it's very useful to have vanishing theorems when you work with um, rings and schemes of finite type over a field. And so I was able to generalize some results um, for those types of rings and schemes to the, to the realm of excellent Q schemes and excellent Q algebras. Uh, the first one I want to mention is that in joint work with Sergi Liu, uh, we are, we, we've worked out the minimal model program for excellent Q schemes. Um, and for more commutative algebraic uh, applications, I was able to prove that rational singularities deform for excellent Q algebras. This is originally due to Elkeek for varieties. I was able to prove Boutot's theorem, which says that pure subrings of rings with rational singularities also have rational singularities. Um, again, both of those rings should be excellent Q algebras. I was also able to generalize Lippmann's criterion for Coma colonies of Reese algebras and the brienson skoda theorem for rings with rational singularities, both for excellent Q algebras. And uh, hopefully this gives you some sense for how these theorems are used. Uh, but what I want to talk about next is what do you do in positive and mixed characteristic? And so in positive and mixed characteristic, as I said before, uh, we don't have resolutions and singularities necessarily, and vanishing theorems are actually false. Um, and so instead, uh, what we've learned is that we should use Frobenius techniques, so techniques involving the Frobenius morphism in characteristic P, or with perfectoid spaces in mixed characteristic. And these are all these, you know, first of all, get rid of the issue of vanishing theorems, but are also very useful to work around the lack of resolution and singularities because they give us tools to study singularities. And so what I'll finish with is a segue into my main talk, my research talk that I'll be giving. And so one application of perfectoid techniques that I have recently is the following theorem on uniform bounds on symbolic powers. So what does my theorem say? It says that if I is an ideal in a regular ring of dimension D, then the Dn symbolic power of I is contained in I to the N for all positive N. And so an equal characteristic is due to I and Lazarus Feldman Smith and Hoxer and Hunicke. In mixed characteristic, if I is radical and uh, R is excellent, this is due to Mann and Schwede, and the general case is due to myself. 
And so if you're interested in learning about how I use mixed characteristic techniques to prove this theorem, uh, please come to my talk. Thank you very much.